Hello everyone and welcome back to our second demo of the um, Rufus Bat Kingfisher. So now that we've drawn it out we're going to have a look at doing some shading. So I've chosen some colours um, and actually out of the whole list here the ones that I haven't used is the cherry and the chilli. Um, but I'm going to use all the others. So what I find best with the colour pencils is to start off dark and build up with a lighter tone. So with that in mind, I'm going to start with the Shiraz and just do a little bit of shading in all the darker areas. So let me just bring this over here. I'm going to just cover that for now because I'm going to lean on it and I don't want to um, spread any colour anywhere. So I'm going to go with the Shiraz first up here um, because it's darker just on this edge around here. And what I'll do is I'll start off this demo showing you um, the colours and application. Um, and then in a third demo, I'll actually finish it um, later. But we'll start off with just um, the start off so you can see what to do. What I'll also do is list the colours that I'm using um, just in the description as well. So starting off a bit lighter in application and just sort of following the form of the head as it comes round like this. Keeping it nice and light at the minute. Um, and then as it comes round under here, it's almost got like a little cheek that comes up around there and then we've got a white area that just comes round here as well and then the back part because that's quite a bit darker as well so it's a little bit darker up in here as well. So again, starting off with quite light um, application because you can always go darker and not also forgetting that when you actually add the water onto the ink tints, it does um, really brighten, doesn't it? So we don't need to put too much down, just um, enough at the moment. And we, we, you know, we won't take it too dark either. But what we'll make sure is that we haven't got any hard edges as such. We'll sort of just shade away so we haven't got any hard edges around there. I'm just going to put a little bit of this colour down the bottom here where it is slightly darker. Um, and around, now with the feathers, it depends if you want to put in every single feather or whether you just want to sort of put a hint in. Oh, just love it when the tip breaks, hey? Okay, right. around here. So yes, yeah, so with the feathers, it depends if you want to put in every single one, or you know, sometimes you can just put in just a few, and it sort of gives the impression that you know there's lots of feathers there. But I'm just going to put in what I can see. And I'm pressing a little bit harder here. And as I'm coming up, I'm releasing the pressure so it's just sort of drifts up there and sort of goes quite light. And then the same with this side. I'm just sort of looking to see what these feathers are actually doing not sort of just drawing them absentmindedly. Always look back at your reference just to make sure that um, you're drawing correctly. Um, we've got more of the feathers in the blue there, but I'm not going to concentrate on those just yet. I'm just going to concentrate on this towel here because this is quite dark as well. So it's quite pinky as it goes up. It's a little bit darker down here. So we're just going to shade 
some of those areas in this one nice and light at the time being just to give it um, a bit of a tonal balance there a little bit darker underneath this wing so when I'm going in with a bit more detail that's when I start to use um, a circular motion still keeping it quite loose and then when I want it um, not as tight then I'll you put my hand a little bit further away down the pencil and just shade in quite loosely that way so moving up the pencil there when I just want a little bit more detail I won't go too much because we've got this lovely pink that's going to go in there so just sort of bleed that out up there so let's concentrate back on the on the head up here as well I want to put too much of the Shiraz down because we've got lots of lovely pinks and reds that are going in up here so just putting this in as a darker tone first and we'll do the eye um, at the end, I know the eye is quite dark, but I don't want to um, do that whilst I'm doing the rest of this at the moment. So again, just some little lines around by the beak there. And lots of white underneath, so a little bit darker here in this triangle area. And then we've got the underside, and lots of feathers in there, but we'll keep that quite light for now. I think I've made this area a little bit too wide now I'm looking at it, but um, that's okay, it is what it is. Okay, so we'll leave that for now, then we'll go into our next colour which is the fuchsia the pink um and then the red and having said that no do you know what i'm going to use the red first um i've chosen the poppy red so i'm just going to go around in here on top of the shiraz going to keep it sort of quite um loose in this exercise Now the ink tense as well will only um, come out as um, intense as you shade them. So if you don't shade them, um, you know, with a, a lot of pressure, so they're quite dark, then they won't come out like that. If you if you shade it quite lightly, so this is quite light at the moment, that's how it will come out. It will come out quite light. So if you want it to be really inky and intense, then you need to shade harder. But that's not to say that you need to shade harder straight away. What I like to do sometimes is just go in with my colour and start to build it up. Um, and then you can always go back in a little bit darker um, or heavier in your application as you go along. Um, also, for any of those of you out there that have um, arthritis in your hands, you'll also know that you can't really apply too much pressure um, straight away and that's certainly what I find so um, don't be hard on yourself and try to do things um, you know too quickly build up those layers and you'll find that hopefully you'll be able to do it a lot easier um, because if you're applying too much pressure it's gonna it's gonna hurt so um, there's no point in doing that to yourself is there so we've got another uh, little layer here In there so we'll just go in with some of these I'm just going to go in with some rounded I'm not going to put too much um, 
emphasis on the feathers as yet we're going to keep it hopefully nice and loose but by shading in this circular motion quite big we're sort of creating a little bit of um, movement and texture in there again I'll go over that a little bit darker as we um, work round it's about just sort of getting the initial tones in first And we'll take this colour up here as well. And we've got a lot of cerise or fuchsia, I should say, up here. We've got a little bit of red just coming in. And lovely orange beak, but the bottom part of the beak looks a bit darker, so we're just going to put that in. Quite lightly. Now, sometimes what I also do is move my um, my picture around so that I can shade certain parts a little bit easier. You know, just turn the paper around a little bit. But um, for demonstration purposes, I won't start swishing it around. But sometimes it can be easier just to do that. Okay, so we're just building up the colour there. Um, I'm going to go in with my um, tangerine now, the orangey colour. And just start to build up the different colours on top. So when we put the water onto this, if you decide to, you might not decide to put water on top. But when you put the water on top, we'll get a multitude of these colours all coming through together. So it should look really lovely. We've got a lot of the um, the pink at the top there, so I won't go too mad with the orange. And remember as well, when you're shading, just to give your pencil um, a little turn, because as you're shading here, you're flattening down one side. So if you just give the pencil a little turn, you're sort of going off to a sharper side to carry on with your work. So that's always helpful as well. I'm going to put more of, a, of the fuchsia up there. We've got more of the yellow down underneath here. I'm just following that form around. And then going on top of the back here with the tangerine. Try to do this reasonably quickly. I'm going to use the bigger circles over on this side. So I'm not going to do this as a demonstration on feathers as such otherwise I'd go into a bit more detail with those it's more of a an overall view of the bird as such there so let's go in with the um, fuchsia now 
what have I done with it? It is deceptive because the actual um, end of it is quite um, dark. Right, so let's go in with the fuchsia. I'm just at the moment just sort of doing some sweeping movements around. A little bit under here. Sometimes with the ink tents, what people sometimes like to do as well is rather than building up all the different colours as I am here, um, some people like to sort of just put um, a base colour down first and wet it. And then sort of do the next shading on top and wet that and so on and so forth. You could sort of potentially build it up that way as well. And just some of the cerise down here as well. Always rest your hand on something so you don't end up dragging colour or making your hand dirty by spreading colour around that you don't really want to. And I'm just shading it in sort of big circles just to create... Um, a little bit of texture there. And then down in the towel a little bit. And what's really going to warm this up is when I put the um, Sienna Gold on top because that's such a lovely bright colour. I need to put a bit of the um, tangerine down here as well. So the reason why we put the darker colours on first is so that you have the brighter colours on top. That's what we want to try and achieve. It's not to say you can't go back with a dark colour to sort of uh, you know add in a bit of tone or whatever it is you need, but it is quite handy um, to put the darker colours in first, which just helps you build up. Um, a little bit of tone underneath and then when you put the uh, subsequent colours on top they sort of just knock back that darker tone a little bit so it doesn't take over um, the picture which can happen but it doesn't mean that you can't go back some forwards and add a little bit more dark and you know things like that <sighs> there so let's start to bring in some of the um yellow now as well so I'm not I haven't done all of it because I just want to show you some of the parts so this is our sienna gold and we're just going to bring that in on top over here and what I'm hoping is that when we actually start to um put some water on these colours really do zing out and actually what I might do is bring some of that yellow into it as well I've chosen um, a sun yellow so I think I'll bring some of that into it as well just to brighten it up And the thing is as well with any pencils, especially these ones because they're water soluble, is that when you put the water on top, if it's not as bright as you want it to, to be, you just literally let it dry and then go back on top. You can always add a little bit more colour. And this yellow is going to really lift that up now.
And if you want to retain any white, you must leave that in yourself. Um, because adding white on top of these can be quite um, quite a challenge. Unless you were to use um, a little bit of gouache, that might work. So just give it a really, really light shade over there. And then what I really want to do is go in and just get rid of some of these hard edges. You can see the colour just sort of starting to build up a little bit now. In there. So the colours underneath, I'm going to keep to... Um, hmm. I'm going to go with the light red underneath, I think, actually. So we've got some of these sort of other sort of feathers that are just sort of coming around here. I'm just doing a little hint of them. I'm going to put the red on and then going to put some of the um, fuchsia on top of that as well. This is all just to give a hint, not necessarily do a work of art showing um, feathers as salt. So I'm going to keep it really quite light under here. And I'm going to go in with the um, the fuchsia, this up here a little bit as well. And because we need to sort of show the differences in the tone there, I'm going to go back in with the um, Shiraz which I'm going to have to sharpen again in a minute. I'm just making that little bit of those edges a little bit darker, which you'll see in a moment. Just there. And then we'll go back on with the fuchsia. And then we'll bring a bit of the um, tangerine into it as well. Again, I'll need to start sharpening some of these again. And there, so this is where you're sort of you're playing. And so up here, to me, it looks like it needs to be a bit darker, but 
I can go back in there and press it a bit harder with the Shiraz again just to sort of um, bring up some tonal values so slightly differences in tones that's what's really important colour is important but it's, diff it's really important to show these different tonal values very important so they're all a little bit darker up here And there, and I'm just going to go in with a bit of the blue. So the blue that I've chosen is an iris blue. And we'll just start to put in some of that. It should go sort of a little bit purpley, um, purpley-ish, once we put some water on. I'm just going to take the blue just over and around the front here as well. And then again, do it on the other side, and we've got more blue under here. Apologies. So it's just a little bit darker in the corner there. And I'm just going to bring it a little bit lighter. And what I need to do is then make this bit underneath here darker as well. And we'll go back in with the Shiraz. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to sharpen it. So the sharpener that I use is um, this one. It's a J Car one. Oh, don't know if you can see that. There we go. Um, and it is. Um, it's not electric. It just sort of you know you just put it in and, and you can get a lovely point. But the good thing about this particular sharpener is that it can take different size pencils. So pastel pencils, charcoal pencils. The ink tents because they tend to be a little bit wider, polychromos, anything like that. So it's really rather good. So let's go in with that a little bit darker here. Try not to press too hard actually because that's why the nib breaks and I am a bit of a terror for doing things like that. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even press that hard. <laughs> Try not to because it hurts my hand but here we go. So you sort of you know build up the colour there. Um, so what I'm going to do is because we're nearly at the end of this sort of 30 minutes, um, I think what we'll do is we'll just try and put a little bit of colour on, a bit of water rather, so you can just sort of get a, an idea um, as how that's going to work out. And then um, we'll finish it. I'll finish it a little bit later, but just so you can see in this demo. So. Let's take these colours up here. So from here, I'm going to go round. Just wash my brush off. Make sure you've got a bit of kitchen towel so you can just um, take off the excess water. And look at that colour. Just absolutely comes to life, doesn't it? it really does. So just continuing round because it's all quite light round here and we're coming into the the darker shades I will put the the um, eye in later nice and dark we'll put that in but once everything has dried off just being careful there not playing back with it too much let it dry um, if you're at all worried, just wash the brush and just go back in and make sure that you've wiped your brush onto a bit of kitchen towel. So it really has brought out the colour, hasn't it? It looks lovely. Just 
is clean your brush. Make sure you clean your brush, especially if you're going into light colours. And even up there, clean it again. Wipe it off on a bit of kitchen towel because otherwise you'll lose that lovely yellow because you'll drag the, um, the orange down, which is fine if you want it, but not if you don't. And there. So hopefully this is just starting to give you an idea. And again, normally when I'm sort of, this is a bit of an odd angle, I might be tempted to um, just move my paper around. But for the demonstration, I won't because I don't want to start swishing things. But do think about that when you're doing your own. You might need to just move the paper so it just makes the angle just a little bit easier to paint. I'm not forgetting, you can always go back over when it's dry if you feel that you need to add a bit more to it. So where the feathers are, because I was um, shading it in a circular motion, I'm going to sort of almost sort of do the same up here. I'm just going to sort of, not circles, but sort of apply the water in this sort of fashion, just sort of create a little bit of texture there. Wash the brush, get rid of the excess, go into the lighter areas first. And then it's fantastic. Look at the colour, it's wonderful. And you can always go back in and add a little bit of texture afterwards, um, just with colour pencil on top. The polychromos are good because they, they, they do come to a really beautifully sharp point. So polychromos is quite good to use sometimes on top of things like this just to create um, you know, a little bit of detail if that's what you want to, but you don't have to. As I said, this isn't a, a demo in how to create feathers, it's just sort of how to create the bird as a whole and also just how to use the ink tents there. And again, just be careful because we've got a little bit of darker colour there.